Welcome back to another video. So number one, it feels like forever since I've actually sat down and spoke to you guys because I didn't film a video last week. I was literally rammed, so um, I didn't get a chance to film. However, I'm here now and this video, honestly, I'm getting so emotional already. <laughs> um, it's been one year officially today, so well, not today. When this comes out on Sunday, um, it will be one year since I launched Dress Your Daydream. And honestly, it has been the best decision I think I have ever made in my whole life. So I wanted to celebrate that with you today and kind of go through my journey, go through, um, I suppose, my experiences of what I've learnt this year and what have been my best memories so far. So I officially launched my business after my sister's baby shower. So I wasn't actually meant to get into balloons. If you don't know me already, you'll know that I actually got into this industry by accident, <laughs> um, which just proves to me that everything happens for a reason and the universe definitely wanted me <laughs> to be on this path. So um, I remember planning it all. I had the sweet car, I had the flower wall and all this kind of stuff like the very vague different different props that event people have basically so that's what I thought I really needed and I knew that I wanted to get into events but I didn't know balloons were a thing so I'm scrolling through Pinterest I literally can't speak I'm scrolling through Pinterest to try and find some kind of inspiration and I came across this gorgeous like deep red setup and I've never seen anything like it before in my life. Like I genuinely was like in awe with it. I was like, how on earth do people do this? Like you've got to be so clever to be able to do that. I wouldn't even know where to start. So I thought, you know what? It stuck in my mind. Like it literally, um, I couldn't get it out of my mind. And I was like, I'm just gonna have a go. Like what have I got to lose? Worst case scenario, it's only my sister's baby shower. I'm sure she won't mind. Um, so if it looked rubbish, I didn't like think, ah, oh, it doesn't matter kind of thing. Um, so I brought a kit from Amazon, I brought a pastel balloon garland kit from Amazon and didn't even have an electric pump. I'd never even blown a balloon up in my life. I didn't know how to tie a balloon. It was something that I used to hate with a passion. Like I, My mum always says to me, like, I can't believe you got into this industry because you used to hate balloons and you used to hate having to tie them up and everything like that. So um, it was a shock to my mum, that's for sure. So yeah, I made all these balloons up, I had to get my sister to help me because um, we had to blow up like 250 balloons by our mouths which is absolutely rank now that I think back because you don't know where them balloons have been and now I'm like preaching to everybody don't put the balloons by your mouth <laughs> um, but yeah that's how it started and I remember I had the fishing line and I felt really organised but I didn't know where to get fishing line from at this point so I literally had to ask George's dad, no not George's dad, George's granddad um, to give me some fishing line from like his fishing trips, <laughs> like that is where it began guys and I remember pairing them all up, all the balloons were over in flat they were all terrible quality like it was just bad from the beginning but I remember being there like wrapping it around getting all stressed when it snapped and all the balloons are flying off the garland and the garland was so rigid when I put it on the bloom wall but you know what like I was so proud of myself like I thought that was good looking back now it, it weren't great let's just be honest Um, I'm gonna try and leave a photo around here somewhere Um of my first ever one because I've never deleted anything off my Instagram or off my Facebook page. I really don't see why I should, um, just purely because I love to look back and see my progress. I love others to look back and think, Do you know what, there is growth and room for everybody. Like, I just like looking back and reflecting on it. Like, the reflection of where I started and the progress that I can still make is just, it means so much to me. So, I've left all those there. And then I'd done that garland, and like, my mum's, like, nurses were coming around and things like that. And they were like, oh, wow, like, I love that. Like, and I was like, oh, oh my God, like, maybe I should get into this kind of thing. So, I watched tutorials after tutorials. Like, I was constantly, constantly um, like bombarding myself with knowledge and um, practice and things like that. Um, exactly one week after I launched, we went into the first national lockdown, which obviously is not good for an events business. 
obviously. Um, so what I did was I thought to myself, right, now is the time I can either literally think, right, I'm not gonna start this, I'll just wait till after the pandemic. Cause I was so naive, I was like, oh, it's only gonna last a few weeks. Like, but obviously you're still going through it now. So good job I chose to just power through and use that time to practice because I honestly am really grateful for the pandemic in in ways, guys. Like obviously all all the things has happened, it's affected everybody, um, including ourselves. So I'm grateful in the fact that it's given me time to kind of really focus on the skill and research the industry as a whole in order for me to move forward and honestly like I'm just so excited I, I had the bug for it then like it was like a tunnel like a black hole and I was just getting sucked into it I couldn't stop like it was constant I was practicing every day I was researching every day learning new things and then um when we had that little gap in like the summer where events of 30 people could take place I was literally like living the good life like I loved it I had that kind of taste for it then and um, I was fully booked every weekend of that kind of period and I did not want it to stop like I, my obsession and my passion just grew and grew um I learned a lot about the background because people just think like oh she just does balloons well there is so much in the background like that people don't realize so I'd like try to get knowledge of all that and yeah, so a year on, well, about 10, 11 months on, um, no, I've missed that whole stage. So before that, so maybe about eight months later, um, I think it was August actually. So I think in August I launched YouTube, like how crazy is that? So I started off by um, trying to do just mini tutorials on my Instagram. So I used to be so scared that I didn't even speak. Like I remember the first time that I tried to do a tutorial and the words just weren't coming out of my mouth. Like I was like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> like the words just weren't coming and I felt so embarrassed. I was like, I literally can't do this. So I just did a few time lapses, got used to the camera because I remember somebody saying to me like, you need to get your stories more. You need to be like the face of your business more. And I was like, Oh my god, I've got to go on a story log. Honestly, like anything in front of the camera at this point, I was petrified. It was like my worst nightmare. So I had to learn how to get out of my comfort zone comfort zone in order to grow. So um I'd started doing that, started doing like little mini time lapses and stuff like that. And then um I finally, me and Jordan lying in bed and he was like, You should start a YouTube channel. And I was like, Oh my god, no, like, no way. And he was like yeah you need to do it like it'll be good for you you'll enjoy it and I was like oh my god shall I actually do it and then I thought do you know what what have I got to lose what have I actually got to lose there is nothing that can go wrong the worst case scenario is that everyone thinks I'm talking a load of rubbish no one can follow my kind of tutorials and it's just useless and becomes a natural flop <laughs> um but it hasn't it's crazy and my confidence with the camera and with filming and my passion for actually helping other people grew so much from YouTube blog. I genuinely can't even tell you how happy it makes me to be able to help you guys and give you some kind of, I suppose, contribute towards your journey a little bit by sharing what I've learned along my way. So, um, yeah, I started doing all these tutorials and I'm now on, I think it's like 800 and something subscribers, which might not seem a lot to a lot of people. However, to me, that's an insane amount of people that choose to watch these videos and that choose to follow and support me. And for that, I literally can't thank you enough. So, um, yeah, I get some lovely messages, some funny messages. And... I really, really enjoy doing YouTube videos. So then from this kind of passion of helping people, I was like, right, I'm gonna start sharing some tips on my Instagram page as well. So I started sharing some tips on my Instagram and I was then getting like two to 300 messages a day. Um, just saying, it was kind of like the frequently asked questions. So for example, like where'd you get your balloons from? What's your favorite color combinations? And all this kind of stuff. And I was spending hours every day replying to everybody because I never want to half ass a, a message. I always want to um, kind of 
make sure that everyone's got as much information as possible. So I basically um, thought, right, let's just start up an academy. So <laughs> on top of all that, on top of YouTube and the, everything like that, I thought, let's just wing it and have a go and see. And I said, imagine if I get five people that actually want to join me on this academy that I can help. And right, let me just backtrack a bit and tell you what the academy is. So, in the academy, um, I share all of my latest top uh, tricks and tips that I've learned along the way, so you don't have to make the same mistakes that I do, that I have, I mean, <laughs> I'm still making mistakes and I'm sure I'll learn from them. Um, so, I've got all of that, I've got mini tutorials, I do monthly workshops, I do weekly lives, we've got an amazing Facebook group that is filled with artists from around the world like it is insane we've got people from america australia italy and um, we've got literally so many people on there and everyone is so lovely and supportive so i cannot thank you girls enough because you've been incredible as well massive massive part of this journey and um, so yeah i want to say a massive thank you to you and it is just become something so much more than i expected and when I said to George, like, oh, I've got my first five, and that was on the first day, and I, I was like, this is crazy. Like, five people have subscribed to let me help them, and my passion for this is so strong, and I really want, my goal is to kind of be able to travel around the UK and do face-to-face -face workshops when coronavirus is finally gone. So um, that is my goal. And whilst we're on the topic of goals, I want to talk about what my goals are going to be um, for the next like year or so, so I can look back on this video in like a year's time and be like, yeah, like I can't believe it, I've done it kind of thing. So, because I know I'm going to try my best to do it. So I want my academy to grow to the point where I can go around the country like I just said and help as many people in person and um, I also want to be doing a lot more tutorials on YouTube which is the ultimate goal just because obviously this year's been hard with tutorials I mean I'm not making excuses up but it's been hard purely for the fact that events have not been allowed to be taking place so I've been doing all the tutorials at home and obviously I've got little threads and um, so I can't be doing like three tutorials a week and um, with no events um, because it would just become impossible so I'm hoping next year or the, towards the end of this year when events can take place I'll be able to film everything and be on here more because that's what I love to do and the ultimate dream for me like the ultimate dream and one day I'm praying that I can look back on this video and think oh my god I did it I want Dress Your Daydream HQ and like me and the girls from the academy were laughing our heads off the other day when I did a live on Instagram um, and we were just saying like oh, how funny would it all be, we can all have matching t-shirts, I basically just can vision it now like I'm seeing it, I can see it in my head like I want to walk in, have a nice fresh like reception area where um, like clients and potential artists up and coming artists can come and um, we can all have like a chat and stuff like that and then we've got a completely fresh studio area where I could do workshops we could do setups you can come and do your own setups and practice I want like a big storage room I want a nice office oh that is the dream that is the dream comment below what your dream is for your business what is your ultimate goal and um, I would love to know because I love sharing things like that so yeah, I just made this video purely because I wanted to go over what a crazy year this has been and just to say a massive, massive thank you to everybody um, who's been supporting me, everybody who's chose to subscribe, everybody who's shared my work, followed me, just helped me get to the position of a small business where I am today and I genuinely cannot be more grateful. I genuinely love you all so much and I think that this year I'm going to be giving you more content, I'm going to be learning new things and I want to be sharing it with you all. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. Thank you so, so much and yeah, I will see you in the next one.